Hi there, my name's Tristan, and uh, tonight we're going to be shooting the Leo triplet, which is uh, three galaxies that are right next to each other. So what I've got here is um, a Star Adventure 2i by Skywatcher. I have a Sony Alpha A6100 mirrorless camera. I have a Sony 200 to 600 millimeter telephoto lens. This is basically taking the place of a telescope. Now, it's not going to work as good as a telescope. The, the quality of glass, the type of glass that's inside it, is not anywhere near made for astronomy stuff. It does work. I have gotten some pretty good images using this. It's not going to give you like real pinpoint, you know, stars and stuff like that. This is all I, you know, have right now, so I'm just making use of it. But, uh, uh, I've only been doing it this way for a few months. I've been into astronomy my whole life and I definitely know a good bit about the universe and anything astronomy related. So now I have a star tracker and the star tracker or the mount is easily the most important thing like other than the camera I guess because if you have a mount and no camera you can't really do anything. But if you have a camera and you don't have a mount, you're very limited to what you can do. On the grand scheme, at least. So right now, Leo, the constellation, is over here in the east, rising. It's not up very high yet, but it is up high enough to the point where I can get my camera onto my target and at least just start taking pictures. I don't believe it's supposed to get cloudy until like 3 or 4 in the morning and it's like 8.30 p.m. right now. So if I can get on my target now and just crank out those pictures until it gets cloudy at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, hopefully, hopefully, I can get like at least maybe 5 hours of usable data or, you know, 6 hours would be awesome. I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> Especially shooting at 600 millimeter on a star adventurer. Okay, so my subs or my individual exposures can't really be any longer than like 45 seconds shooting at 600 millimeters. The star adventure amount is definitely not meant to be used at focal lengths like 600. And since this is a crop sensor camera on a full frame lens, it's technically more like 900 millimeters if you want to compare it to a full frame. So technically it's 900, I think 918 millimeters or something like that. I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, the, the Star Adventure doesn't really like anything over 300 millimeters, but you can still do it. I mean, a 30, 45 second exposure is still like pretty good, you know? Like that's a lot better than taking individual one second exposures. I am already polar aligned. But now I have to point my camera over here. Uh, one other thing I will mention is uh, I have an intervalometer here. This thing. And on my camera. So I can set my exposure time and how many pictures to take and the delay, etc. So I don't have to touch anything. Otherwise I'd be out here freezing all night long and I don't want to do that. So I have a dew heater band here on the front of my camera lens that prevents dew from building up on the lens and since it's winter in the northeast of the United States that dew will turn into ice very quickly so a dew heater is a necessity and um, I also have wall power running to my camera otherwise the camera battery will die in like two hours Okay, so now my polar alignment's good. Now I gotta balance it. Okay, so now that I know I'm balanced, I'm gonna double check my polar alignment one more time. All right, so we are good. So now I'm going to set this back to where it's supposed to be. So now I'm going to turn on my intervalometer. 
So I'm on bulb mode on the camera. Let's start it. Let's see what it does. But I do see the Leo triplet down here. Bottom of the frame. Right by this bright star here. So now I know I have to bring this bright star in my picture here that I can see on my live view up and more towards the middle then I know my target should be relatively in the middle. I can actually see some detail in the hamburger galaxy in just a single picture. Alright, so I finally have this framed the way I want it. So now, what I'm gonna do, five second delay, 45 second exposure, five second interval in between each exposure, and we're gonna take 500 pictures. Press play, let it count down, and we're off. Let's see what happens. All right, so it's the next day now. I didn't end up taking my darks or my flat frames till about six o'clock in the morning when the sun started rising. I was way too tired to be out there filming, explaining that process. I'll just explain real quick. To take the dark frames, you just put the lens cap on. You keep all your settings the same as your light frames. So same exposure time, same ISO, same aperture, everything. And then you wanna take about 20 to 30 with the lens cap on and then you'll stack those in your final image with your light frames but basically what that does is it'll give you a much smoother image nowhere near as much noise especially if you're shooting at a higher iso like i did last night for your flat frames if you're a beginner they can be a little tricky they might not make sense i'll explain it now there's different ways to do flats some people will point their camera at the sky when the sun's like just starting to rise and it's got like that real like flat beige look to it and that's how they will do their flats much easier way to do that you can do anytime take your lens cap off i take my phone now i have a pretty big phone what i do is i just have like this tracing like screen app but first you want to diffuse the light because you don't want your exposure to be too short or you'll see banding in your flats and that will ruin your image so i just take like a white shirt and I put it over top of my lens like this and I make sure there's no wrinkles in the top and then you want to be very careful not to change your focal length or your focus while you're doing this because those have to stay the same for doing flats and then you'll take your tracer or whatever you're using and you'll put it on top like this after you've done that you can see a big dust spot up there Taking flats will remove those in your final image so you don't have to worry about them in processing, which is great. But basically what you want to do, put your camera in manual mode, and you want to get your histogram here about a third of the way over, or get your, uh, your exposure graph at zero. Just keep changing that. So now my exposure graph is at zero, and my histogram is about a third, maybe a little over a third, that's fine. But that's exactly how you want it, and it should look like this and then you want to take about 30 of those and stack those into your final image as well and that will help a lot with vignetting and that will get rid of these dust spots that might be on your sensor or your lens or your telescope in your final image all right well that's all there was to that i'll get the image stacked and processed and see how it turned out